but that's okay. It's like I got notes, like I've been preparing to take the CPA exam again, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm not joking, I made a PowerPoint slide because I am a nerd like that. <laughs> So uh, if you want, go on to the next slide. So I don't have a clicker, so Tammy's going to be my clicker. Hopefully it works. Um, it's not going on to my next slide, but I'll tell you what it said. It's a little meme that was on Facebook. Y'all probably seen it. It says, she is clothed in leggings and oversized shirts and eats without fear of the future. Probably me, 24-7. So I tried to get that on the shirt, but Aaron said, no, we need to put a scripture verse. So <laughs> anyway, um, God really called me to do this. It started back in 2016 when um, Susie and Mandy both spoke. It really just touched my heart, and God told me then, you need to get your testimony out of out there. Um, then I was at Nicole Pace's house one night, and she called me pure, and I was like, oh, God, we got to get this girl straight. <laughs> she doesn't have a clue. And then Adam Larkins in Sunday school told an awesome story about how when God calls you to do something, you need to follow him. And so... I felt led to do it. Um, there were many excuses that day. Karen announced the meeting. Uh, it was Labor Day weekend. I got a pool now. <laughs> There's lots of reasons I shouldn't come Labor Day weekend to a meeting at 4 o'clock. But um, God just spoke to me and he said, you need to go. And I can. Addison and Audrey, had, or no, Addison and Sydney had choir that uh afternoon at five I was like okay we got to drive both vehicles so I had all kinds of reasons to not do it but God really told me you need to go to this meeting and then when we were praying to open the meeting I said if you really want me to speak Lord just provide an opportunity for me to volunteer so um, we prayed and then the first thing she said, she said, well, we don't have any money or any speakers. <laughs> and I said, thank you, God. So I said, I'll speak and I'm free. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, it worked out. And when God calls you to do something, he makes it pretty easy to follow just like that. But then Satan will come to attack and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So I knew that he would be all over me. I tried very hard to pray daily, put on that full armor of God, and be obedient to what he had called me to do. I've prayed for every lady here, and just over their seats, that, the, that God would just bless this, and the Holy Spirit would move. So, um, I was raised Catholic. I believed in God, but you know, Satan believes in God, too. Uh, I was not saved. I did not know Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. My home was plagued with addiction. I was taught that you had to confess your sins and have a penance, repentance. But now I know that Jesus Christ has paid that atonement and he has claimed it for me and I don't have to worry about that. Um, I knew the Catholic Church was not for me. I went to Catholic school from kindergarten till my senior year of graduation. And uh, I remember sitting in that high school gym having mass thinking I've got to get out of here. This is not for me. Of course, I didn't have uh, the perfect uh, plan of what was going to be for me because I made some really bad choices. But um, if you'll go on to the next slide for me, Tammy. Um, back in um, 1993... I was 16 years old, and like a typical teenager, I was sleeping in on a Saturday morning. Um, there was a knock at the door. I heard my mom talking to a man, and uh, she woke me up, and she said, hurry up, get ready. We got to go to the hospital. Your sister's been in an accident. My dad was at work, so she called him. We all met at the hospital. They uh, took us back to a little room. I, I know now that if they bring you to a private room, it's probably not good news. And what felt like an hour, it was probably only 15 minutes, but they came in and told us that I, I lost my sister that day. She had passed away uh, in that car accident. 
going to class that day and I can tell you I can clearly mark my life in history before that day and then after that day like I said I was 16 years old so I was young and young and dumb um, our last conversation the night before you know I was 16 I just turned 16 September 21st she passed away October 9th she was buried on her 19th birthday on October 12th so there was three years between us um, this past October 29th or October 9th was 25 years since she's been gone so um, our last conversation, I called, like I said, she was my personal taxi driver because she was a driver and I had just turned 16 and I needed a ride from my friend's house. She was going to bed because she had that class, uh, she had a class at Owensboro Community College early that next morning. This was before cell phones. I did not text her. There was actually a receiver that she picked up and my dad also picked up uh, the receiver and heard me. So he said, you go on to bed. You know, we're talking all on the phone and he said, you go on to bed. I'll go pick her up. So my last words were her. Can you give me a ride from my friend? You know, come pick me up. I didn't say I love you when we hung up. You know, I told her I loved her many times before. She knew that, but still our last conversation, so simple. And uh, I don't blame my parents, because after that, I feel like every day was a struggle for them to get up and just breathe. Uh, I can't even describe it. But I was alone. She was my only sibling. We lived in a three bedroom, one bathroom house, so we were close even if we didn't want to be. Uh, but at that time, I made some of the worst decisions in my life. Uh, I was raised Catholic. Alcohol was acceptable in my family, in my social atmosphere. I didn't know any difference, and it became one of my distractions. I can joke now and say um, I probably drank more alcohol before I was 21 than I, than I did when I became 21, because that's actually the age that I was saved. So... Um, I made the wrong choices, I was hanging around the wrong kids, but I put on a mask, and uh, even though I know my parents probably knew it, like I said, they were just trying to get by day by day. Um, now, I never missed a curfew, because you never leave a grieving mother who's just lost her child, wondering where her only living child is. So I was never late. I called. I found a payphone because, again, it was before those cell phones. And I called my mama, and she knew where I was, but I still was not doing what I should have been doing. I was making bad choices. Um, so... Uh, September 8th, 1998, that sounds so long ago, that's when Jamie Tate and I had our first date, um, we were both total messes, I just can't even tell you, um, his family will tell me that I'm what saved him, but if they only knew that Jesus Christ had a big plan to save us both, um, his mom invited me to church, of course I wanted to make a good impression, so um, we went to church. I went with her. He didn't even go. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> he doesn't miss now. Um, but um, I got saved that day. Brother Tim Halls, the pastor of the First Free Will Baptist Church in Owensboro, um, he preached on the prodigal son that day, and the Lord just touched my heart, and I went to that altar, and I was saved. And I would love to say that it was easy after that, but it was not. I did not know um, the way of the Lord. It was a process of salvation and sanctification for sure. Um, it took some time because I, like I said, uh, drinking alcohol, you know, it was in their church creed in the front of their hymnal. And, you know, I was like, sure, the Catholics say they don't drink either. Wink, wink, you know. So when I was like, oh, they're serious about that, uh, you know, God convicted me. Uh, but adult peer pressure is real. Um, I hadn't, hadn't drank any alcohol in over a year, and we were out with some friends, and they kept asking me and asking me, and finally it was just like, okay. I didn't even drink like half a glass, and I woke up with like the worst hangover ever in my life. Um, and it was God's reminder, if you'll go to the next slide, um, 
it was God's reminder that like mm, you remember that where I delivered you from and uh, he gave me this verse and it's really convicted me ever since first Corinthians six twelve. all things are lawful for me but all things are not helpful all things are lawful for me but I will not be brought under the power of any he delivered me from a pit he has proven time and time again he is the Lord Almighty and I will not be brought under the power of any except for the power of my Lord and so um, we got married Jamie and I got married and at the one year mark um, we decided to try to have children. Within three months, we were pregnant with Addison. Uh, she's just precious to me. Um, when she was one years old, we, we tried again to have another baby. And um, I had some problems and pain and we ended up going to the doctor and I had endometriosis. Um, we did have uh, many failed attempts to trying to get pregnant, but after a year, I had surgery and um, they removed the endometriosis and within one month I got pregnant so it really wasn't that difficult um, we did not find out that Addison and Audrey were both girls we were surprised on both of them people don't do that very often uh, the doctor even almost forgot to tell us I was like oh what is she when the, when, the, when Addison was born um, but Jamie's the last Tate uh, so I knew his family would want a boy so I thought you know what if we wait and find out until after she's born nobody's gonna care because we got this cute little baby to hold and so we didn't find out there's very few surprises in life and I'm so thankful for those two daughters of mine and um, I think being left an only child, God just really convicted me, or it wasn't probably, it was just me being convicted that I never wanted to leave my children alone. I wanted lots of babies. I wanted lots of children because I, still to this day, I struggle not having a, a sibling. Um, I wanted four kids, and, um, but I know now too that, like if I had 300 kids and I lost one, it would be irreplaceable. Um, and I think that's what Jesus feels for us. You know, it says he leaves the 99. Because he doesn't, if he loses one of us, it's too many. So, when Audrey turned one, we tried for another child. We had the problems again. But, of course, I knew how to fix it. Last time I got, had surgery, and within a month I was pregnant. So, I had the surgery again. It was unsuccessful. Um, I kept trying to have another baby uh, I did have a miscarriage I was 8 or 12 weeks long and at that point I went to a specialist I had surgery again um, and over years you know they told me well you'll never get pregnant again unless you have in vitro fertilization and that just wasn't for me and I was like what's wrong with me I'm blessed with these two beautiful wonder gir wonderful girls uh, isn't that enough? And, and, you know, I felt guilty for even wanting more. Nobody wants to hear that somebody with two children struggles with infertility, you know. Um, but we didn't stop trying. And uh, one night, I had been teaching a Bible study at our church in Owensboro. It was called Experiencing God. And I hadn't done my homework for that day, went to bed. But it was like 1 or 2 in the morning. Uh, I know it was God. He woke me up and he's like, you need to go do that Bible study. You didn't do it. Went downstairs trying to be quiet because my family was all sleeping and um, did that Bible study. And it was like God was speaking to me. It was on Abraham and Sarah. Uh, God just spoke to me from the pages. He told me that I would have another baby, not in an audible voice, but that was just peace and rest, rest assurance. Um, I thought, well, well, you know, within a, nine months, I'm going to be rocking a baby here in my rocking chair in my living room. But um, then I went to Awana here. Um, if you'll go to the next slide, Brother Gary taught on the same thing um, that night at Awana. They did not need help. That's a God thing right there because I always was working Awana and they said they didn't need me. It was Cassandra at the time. She's like, nope, we don't need you. So I got to go to Bible study. And the fact that I got to go to Bible study, I feel like is God alone. But Brother Gary taught on the same thing I had just studied in that Experiencing God Bible study. Um, will the next slide come up? 
I'll, it's it's fine if it won't. It's it's a scripture that uh, both of the the study and Brother Gary spoke on Genesis fifteen five from Abraham and Sarah. Then he brought him outside and said, "Look now toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them." And he said to him, "So that your descendants shall be." And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. He believed in the Lord. That was pretty powerful, and that's what I needed to do. I felt like I was the only one in the sanctuary that night when Brother Gary taught that Bible study. Um, I never journaled anything back then. Um, and uh, I wrote all this down. I even found it, you know, my, my notes. <laughs> I went and dug out all my books from back then, and I still had all that. And it just brings me back to such a precious time. Um, but I wanted it on my time when God told me all that. I thought it was going to happen, like I said, within nine months. And I don't know why we think God needs our help, but we do. And we think that we need to be the ones to fix it. I got impatient. I got impatient waiting on the creator of all heaven and earth to work a miracle for me. And uh, so I started going to the doctor again. And another year, the same thing, you know, they told me, unless you do the IVF, you're not going to get pregnant. Um, I really struggled with that. Because I thought, how could this be? I, I mean, God placed it on my heart. He told me I was going to have another baby. Did I hear him wrong? Was I not listening? And um, my doctor's appointments were in Evansville. I was driving home that day. I cried the whole hour drive home by myself, just sobbing. I had to go back to work. So I had to go home and clean myself up. But when I got there, I just threw myself on the bed. And I, you know... It was just horrible, and I was like, God, did I hear you wrong? What's going on? And my Bible was on the nightstand. And um, the next slide is, is the next scripture he gave me. And um, if you've been in my Job Bible study, it's miraculous how he works because she closed one of our sessions in Job with this, and it's not even really even think this is related to Job, but... Um, Crying on my bed, Colossians 1.16, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he told me right then, he said, When you have this baby, it'll be my child. I will create it and it'll be for me. And it just gave me such peace. I never went back to the doctor for fertility treatments or medications. Um... I just gave it to him. My new creation was completely in his hands. Um, there's seven years between Addis, or Audrey and Sydney, ten years between Addison. You know, I waited a long time, but he taught me a lot during that. Um, his timing is perfect. His ways are always good. And I'm going to be honest, I gave up. I did give up even after all that. And I was okay with my two girls. But his plan is bigger So they were uh, going back to school, and we had a trip planned to Holiday World before school went back, and I had been feeling sick for like two weeks, and Jamie goes, you don't think you're pregnant, do you? And I was like, no, like that ship has sailed, <laughs> we, you know, that's not happening. And he said, well, you better go to see, because we're going to Holiday World tomorrow, and you don't want to be riding those rides and those kinds of things if you are. So I had to run into work before um, we left on our trip to Holiday World, and um, I stopped by Kroger and got a pregnancy test. So when I got home, I took it, and it instantly turned positive. And he was downstairs packing a cooler of drinks, and I was like, Jamie, come here. And he's like, yeah, what do you want? You know, like, I'm just going to holler that down the stairs. And I was like, come up here now. And I promise you, he about fell out on the floor when I showed him that test. <laughs> we were both so excited, and I made him wait 12 weeks to tell anybody. Because Addison and Audrey were older, and so we just kept that to ourselves for 12 weeks. And I'm telling you, it was just God's miracle. Um, well, you know the end. If you want to go on to the next slide, if it'll... There she, you know, there she's growing in my belly. Um, 
they told me that she I was high risk. They said, oh, because of the AMA. And I was like, what's AMA? Is something wrong? And they're like advanced maternal age. And I thought, well, good night. I could have lived <laughs> forever without knowing what that stood for. <laughs> I was 36 years when she, uh, old when she was born, and I am going to be honest, I thought she was our boy, because I thought, God's perfect plan, we've got two girls, we're going to have a boy, and it's just going to be the, but you know, our ways are not his ways. He's proven time and time again that his ways are perfect, and he knew I needed another girl. He knew that I was already used to. You know, I'd been 10, 7 years saying, come on girls, time to eat girls, get in the car girls, and a boy would have really messed that up. <laughs> I probably would have messed him up because I'd have been calling him a girl. God knew Jamie would be the best dad to those three little girls. They knew he needed to be outdaughtered. And he knew when I lost my sister that I was going to be the mama of three little sisters. And he knew for such a time as this, that tonight I would be blessed to share this with you all and that it would touch somebody out here who might be going through something and lacks the hope that I or can, that it can give them hope that I lacked during that time. So if you'll just pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this story. Lord, it's simple. And you know, I've been nervous about it and, and all these notes and things that I was talking about. But Lord, the Holy Spirit is in charge of it. And Lord, I just know that uh, the struggle and sacrifice that you went through is nothing compared to sharing our testimonies, Lord. So let us be encouraged that we can share what you've done in our lives for us, Lord. All the ugly stuff too, Lord, because it just encourages other people that we might win them to you, Lord, that they might know eternal life with you in heaven through salvation, Lord. Lord, I pray for Tammy as she's going to speak with us and Lori's going to sing for us, Lord. We're just so blessed to have this many women here gathered tonight, Lord. We just give it all to you. And we'll give you praise all our many days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lori's going to come and share a song with us now.